Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you are fine. In our lecture today, we will discuss chapters 19 to 20 in Wuthering Heights, a novel by Emily Bronte. Regarding to chapter 19, in this chapter of Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, we will discuss the summary of the chapter that contains an important point, which is the arrival of Linton. Also, we will discuss the commentary of the chapter that contains two important points that are Kathy's reaction to Wes Linton's arrival and the development of the second generation characters. On the other side, the main characters in chapter 19 are Edgar, Linton, Kathy, Nolly, Joseph, and Heathcliff by name. Certain places, Wuthering Heights and Thrushcross Grange, time years before 1801. Moving on to the summary of chapter 19. The most important point in chapter 19 is the arrival of Linton. Actually, Linton's arrived from London, a bell delicate, effeminate boy who greatly resembles Edgar. He is too weak and sick to play with Kathy and has to lie on a couch instead of sitting with the family during tea. Kathy treats him as should with a new bed. On his side, Edgar confides in Nelly that he hopes having a playmate his own age will help if Heathcliff allows Linton to live at the Grange. However, Edgar's fears are realized when Joseph arrives that evening demanding to take Linton to Wuthering Heights. Refusing to awaken Linton, Edgar promises Joseph that Linton will be delivered to Heathcliff in the morning. So, as Isabella had now died, Edgar Linton returned to the Grange with his youthful nephew, the only son of Isabella and Heathcliff. Edgar took upon himself the responsibility for the bringing up the young Linton, who was just six months younger than Edgar's aunt daughter, Catherine, that is to say, Kathy. On her part, Kathy felt very happy and excited at the return of her father after an absence of a few weeks. She was happier still at the prospect of getting a playmate of her own age in the person of her cousin Linton. However, Linton's spirits at this time were very low, and he cried to find himself in a strange place. Kathy did her best to soothe and comfort him, she struck his curls, kissed his neck, and offered him tea and a salsa as if he were a baby. However, this treatment pleased him, and he smiled cheerfully. So, after our introduction to Miss Catherine in the preceding chapter, we are now introduced to a young Linton in this chapter. Young Linton 
as already made clear, is the son of Heathcliff and Isabella. And as Isabella had died, the boy has been brought by his uncle as Garlington to the Grange. But Heathcliff, on hearing of the boy's arrival at the Grange, loses no time in sending his servant Joseph to the Grange with an urgent message that the boy should be sent to him at Wuthering Heights. On his part, Edgar realizes that he would not be able to keep the boy at the Grange against the wishes of Heathcliff because Heathcliff is his father. Nellie had her apprehensions on this score even before Joseph comes with Heathcliff's messages. What is worth mentioning in this chapter is the character of young Linton. Actually, young Linton is a real weakling. He is a bell delicate effeminate boy, as I have just said, and he strongly resembles his uncle, Esga. And this is a problem for Heathcliff. In his appearance, though, there is a sickly vividness in his countenance, which Edgar never had. Moving on to the commentary of chapter 19. In this commentary, however, we have two important points. The first point is Cathy's reaction towards Linton's arrival. Well, although Cathy is excited about the imminent arrival of her real cousin, she does not want to consider Harrison a relative of hers. She is extremely disappointed in Linton. Cathy? And the reader's first impressions are both similar and accurate about Linton's condition. Linton's condition will not improve, especially living at Wuthering Heights. Moreover, the second important point in this chapter is the development of the second generation characters. So, as the second generation characters develop in the second half of Wuthering Heights, readers should note significant similarities and differences between parents and their children. We have the three children. Linton, the son of Heathcliff, and Isabella, Kathy, the daughter of Catherine and Asga, Harrison, the son of Handley and Francis. And regarding to Linton, most noticeably, although Linton's physical condition is nothing like Heathcliff's, he clearly reflects his father's tyrannical personality. And regarding to Kathy, Kathy, in turn, seems to possess the wildness of her mother, but her personality is tempered a bit, reflecting the nature of her father. Harriton's features, however, favor his aunt, Catherine. But due to Heathcliff's upbringing, his personality is that of a young Heathcliff. Now, moving on to chapter 20 and Wuthering Heights. In this chapter, however, of Wuthering Heights by Emily Pronti. We will discuss both the summary and the commentary of it. To include Linton and Nolly, Linton and Heathcliff, 
hit the cliffs purpose and hit the cliffs was about Pell, Isabella and Edgar. The main characters in this chapter are Linton, Nolly, and Heathcliff. The setting place Wuthering Heights, time before 1801. Now, moving on to the summary and commentary of chapter 20. Well, in chapter 20. The first point is about Nelly and Linton. The next morning, Nelly takes Linton to Wuthering Heights in order to get him to go to a father that he does not know. Nelly makes all sorts of assurances that she knows are not true. Nelly lies quite easily to Linton and is probably somewhat relieved that she will not have to deal with him. Undoubtedly, raising Linton would be worse than raising Catherine was. Don't leave me! I'll not stay here. Linton cries out when Nelly was about to leave Wuthering Heights. So, on the following day, Edgar directed Nelly to take young Linton with her and hand over the charge of the boy to Heathcliff, because Edgar did not want that Heathcliff should come to his residence personally in order to take away the lad. Edgar felt that it would be futile for him to try to keep the boy because Heathcliff would definitely take him away. On her part, Nelly felt relieved because raising up a boy like Linton would be so difficult and even worse than raising Catherine was. Although he cries out, don't leave me, I'll not stay here, while she was leaving Wuthering Heights. On the other hand, the most important point in chapter 20 is about Linton and Heathcliff. So, Linton is taken away from Thrushcross Grange to Wuthering Heights in order to meet his father, Heathcliff. So, when Nelly and Linton arrive, Heathcliff refers to his son as a property. And speaking directly to him, refers to the boy's mother as a wicked slut. And as Heathcliff refers to his son as a property, readers may slightly sympathize with Linton's predicament. Heathcliff clearly has no tolerance for his weak offspring, and the fact that Linton's looks favor his uncle Edgar, as we have said before, make Heathcliff hate him even more. So, what is worth mentioning here is that after meeting his son, Heathcliff mocks him. So Heathcliff was not much pleased by the looks of his son. So he mockingly said, God, what a beauty, what a lovely, charming thing. Haven't they reared it on its nail and sour milk, Nelly? Oh, damn it, my soul, but that's worse than I expected. However, he spoke soothingly to the boy, saying, 
We are not going to hurt thee, Nansen. But he also made a taunting remark to the boy. Thou art thy mother's child entirely. What is my share in thee, well, a chicken? This shows that Heathcliff is not very happy to see his son because the son has taken completely after mother and has nothing in him of the father. The boy's weak constitution and delicate looks greatly disappoint Heathcliff. But he seems to have made up his mind on one point, just as he has already became the owner of the property of the Enshaw family. He has now planned to gain possession of the property of the Linton family. So Heathcliff then told Nolly about his plan for young Linton. He said that he hoped to acquire the entire property of the Linton family at Thrushcross Grange so that his own son could become the owner of that property. He also told Nelly that he had engaged a tutor who would come three times a week to teach the boy. When Nelly was leaving the Hyatt to go back to the Grange, as I have just said, Yoglinton began to cry, saying, don't leave me, I'll not stay here. However, Nelly could do nothing about the matter, and she departed. So, although Heathcliff readily admits he does not love his son, he relishes the opportunity to gain access of the Grange through him. The only use Heathcliff has for the way faith to winning rest is implementing his revenge against Edgar. Continuously, another important point in this chapter that is related to the previous one about Heathcliff's intention to exploit Edgar and his purpose. For this, he says to Nelly, Yes, Nell, he added, when they had departed, my son is prospective owner of your place, and I should not wish him to die till I was certain of being his successor. Besides, he is mine. And I want the truth of seeing my descendants fairly lord of their estates, my child hiring their children to till their father's lands for wages. What Heathcliff means is that he will bring about a marriage between young Linton and young Catherine, so that Edgar's property ultimately comes to the young Linton, because young Catherine would be Edgar's only heir. Heathcliff would also see to it that in case young Linton, being a sickly boy, dies prematurely, the property would pass to himself and not remain in Catherine's possession. And this is exactly what subsequently happened. Significantly, Heathcliff refers to his own son, as we have previously said in previous lectures, not as he, but as it because he has a very low opinion about the boy. 
Accordingly, the last important point in chapter 20 is Heathcliff's words about both Isabella and Edgar. So Heathcliff speaks of his dead wife bitterly, which is quite natural because, as we know, he never loved her. When young Linton says that his mother had never told him about his father, Heathcliff says to him, What a shame of your mother! Never to waken your filial regard for me. You must son, then I'll tell you. And your mother was a wicked slut to leave you in ignorance of the sort of father you possess. On the other side, Heathcliff's reference to Edgar Linton is also very disparaging. He refers to Edgar as the Stifa at the Grange. That was the end of our lecture today. For further reading, please refer to these references. Next lecture, I will discuss other chapters in Wuthering Heights. Thank you very much for your time and good luck.